Hi, and welcome to Crash Course Cryptozoology. Today I'd like to talk about human ancestors, the abominable snowmen, and genetics. Specifically, I want to talk about a find that recently was analyzed for the first time properly and yielded some very interesting results about human ancestry. Particularly, it concerned Denisovans, a relatively new addition to our understanding of human ancestors, and about how they're a bit wider spread than we thought they were. Before I move on to this find, though, and its relation to cryptozoology as a possible new lead, which many certainly looked at it as, I think it's important to lay some groundwork for what Denisovans were, what the Yeti is, and then culminate that into how the two might relate. Because a lot of people think that they might, and that's worth thinking about. Denisovans were first properly cataloged between 2008 and 2010, when a team of scientists from the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology from Germany made a particularly interesting and significant find in a place called Denisova Cave in Siberia. There, the team discovered finger bone fragments and molars that seemed to belong to a whole new human ancestor. The reason by which they were able to determine this is that the conditions in the cave were actually so good that the DNA inside these small fragments of bone was pretty well preserved. They came to the conclusion that this species was related closely to Neanderthals, but was actually different enough to warrant its own species. Thus, named after the cave they were found in, the Denisovans were added to our human ancestry tree. Denisovans are believed to have evolved into existence around 160,000 years ago. At least that's the earliest that we've been able to date them to. It was thought at first that these very Neanderthal-like Denisovans were isolated only in the Denisova cave area. However, since then, our understanding of that has changed. More on that in a bit. Denisovans are believed to have been very robust in their appearance, very much like Neanderthal, very heavy set, likely very strong, very heavy forebrow, so on and so forth. We know that they had brown skin and dark hair, and the particular female whose finger bone was found in the cave had brown eyes as well. However, other findings that are not bones, but rather tools left behind by the Denisovans, or at least believed to have been left behind by the Denisovans, also suggest that they were a very highly intelligent species, going so far as to create these mechanisms, these drill-like mechanisms that very far preceded how early we thought such devices were originally made. Hmm? Did they leave behind art? Better than that, they, they left behind um, certain physical objects uh, which are extremely hard to explain. One of them is a green stone bracelet. Uh, and that bracelet is in the form of a torque, uh, which was therefore slipped on sideways onto the hand. It's not a full ring. Um, and a hole has been drilled through the bracelet. And from that hole, it's been possible to reconstruct that a pendant was hung. Then the archaeologists, there it is, then the archaeologists started to take a look in detail at the drill marks on that hole. And what they discovered was a huge anomaly, that that was drilled with a stable, fixed drill. And it was drilled at extremely high speed. It's a, this is thought to be 40 or 50,000 years old. There is not supposed to have been any such technology in that period that was capable of drilling with a stable fixed drill. They were pretty ahead of the curve for their small population. In a nutshell, that's about all we know about Denisovans right now, but our knowledge is expanding. The other side of this coin is, of course, the Yeti. A legend mainly originating from the Himalayas, which includes the nations of Tibet, Nepal, and Bhutan, the Yeti is described in legend as a sort of guardian spirit, something between an ape and a man, that lives high in the Himalayas. However, reports of the Yeti indicate that if there is something being seen in the Himalayas, and if there is a Yeti, it's something to the effect of a Himalayan great ape that has yet been uncatalogued. There are tons of theories floating around as to where the Yetis might have come from. Because of their description, which tends to be these very large, robust, hair-covered apes, many theorize that they are Gigantopithecus, a species of great ape which went extinct during the rise of mankind or that they are a species of very primitive human. Most of you can probably guess where the two tie, but at this point, we're now going to make that more clear. The recent discovery regarding Denisovans, which expanded our knowledge vastly upon them, was actually not something that we found recently, but something that we properly analyzed recently. In 1980, a Tibetan monk found in a western area of China near the Tibetan Plateau, a fraction of a mandible. For the Tibetan monk, this wasn't really much of an oddity. 
in this particular cave, a lot of animal and human bones had been found, and it was assumed this was just simply another specimen. It was indeed a human bone, but not a modern human, not a homo sapien. Recent tests highly suggest that this mandible belongs to a Denisovan, who, considering Denisova Cave was originally thought to be the only place Denisovans lived in, this mandible was a long way from home. And it suggests that the range of Denisovans was actually much vaster than we originally thought. It's also interesting for cryptozoologists that in an area where a large, human-like, robust ape is seen, the mandible of what we believe to be a large, robust species of human used to live. So the big question becomes, for many, are yetis leftover Denisovans? Or are they branches of them? The short answer is probably not. The problem with the theory is that descriptions of the Yeti, as opposed to, say, the Russian or Siberian Almas, exceptionally human-like, but also exceptionally ape-like, which is not what we would tend to see in a living Denisovan specimen. Denisovans were undoubtedly human, and very much like us, they probably weren't covered in very shaggy hair aside from their heads. Even Neanderthals, who they are more closely related to than Homo sapiens, are thought to have had a very light covering of hair on their bodies, much like Homo sapiens. Granted, you can't quite tell from a fossil how much hair was in the body. You can only compare it to its nearest relatives, which is what we're doing to get an idea of what a Denisovan looked like. There is also the issue of the Denisovan DNA spread. Denisovans do seem to have moved farther east, and they didn't seem to stay in the Himalayas. The areas that have the most Denisovan DNA left in their populations are Papua New Guinea and Australia not in Tibet, China, Bhutan, or Nepal. If Denisovans had lived there and interbred with the other species, you would think that's where you find the largest amount of their DNA left behind, and that simply isn't the case. As for whether or not the Denisovans and hypothetical yetis, if they exist, are related, that's a tougher question, because everything is related to a tree of evolution. How closely related it is, we don't know. Appearance doesn't always mean correlation. It can sometimes, and it can not sometimes it's not that reliable of an indicator. It seems likely that the Yeti would be a species a bit closer on a branch to more primitive, at least more primitive human species, and very likely non-human primate species, as opposed to the very human-like Neanderthals, Denisovans, and Homo sapiens. But there is something very interesting to note about the Denisovans, Neanderthals, and Homo sapiens. Whether or not the Yeti is a close relative of ours, or even if it exists, it's interesting to note that we ourselves are a mix of the gene pool. We're close to Homo sapiens, yes, and by all conventional means, we are. But we're definitely different from the standard Homo sapien. And it just goes to show that these new discoveries aren't just enlightening us about our ancestors, or about possible cryptids, but they're enlightening about us. That being said, until next time.